winning, winning, winning blueprint, blueprint presents. presents. Five minutes or less. New York Giants. Welcome. I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me. This is five minutes or less with the New York Giants. Got five minutes on the clock. Let's get started. So the high point of the season for the New York Giants, that 41 to 34 week two victory over Tampa Bay, come from behind fashion, 25 points in the fourth quarter. That was sweet. So was week six, your utter destruction of the San Francisco 49ers in San Francisco, your NFC championship game counterparts. That was sweet. So was week seven. Versus the Redskins, a game in which you won 27-23 on a last-second Eli Manning to Victor Cruz hookup. But week eight for me was the high point of the season for the New York Giants. That's the week you beat the Cowboys 29-24 in Dallas. But not because of how the game ended up. But because of you being 6-2 for the third consecutive season in a row and looking poised to defend your championship title. That's why that was the high point of the season for the Giants. Again, being 6-2, you beat the San Francisco 49ers, the team that stood in the way last season of you trying to get to the Super Bowl. You demolished them in San Francisco. You beat the Redskins. You beat the Cowboys. You look like a team poised and ready to try and repeat. That was the high point of the season for the Giants. You look at the low point of the season for the Giants. And simply put, it's week 15 at Atlanta. A game in which you failed to show up for. The Atlanta Falcons dominated you in every sense of the word. You were shut out, lost the game 34 to nothing, offered up little to no resistance in that game. And for you, that was it for your season. That was the dagger in the Giants and their season and their bid to become back-to-back Super Bowl champions. And that game also put a bow on another mid-season meltdown with the New York Giants. That was definitely, by far, the low point of the season for the New York Giants. So now you look at free agency activity for the New York Giants. And for the Giants, it's minimal. Minimal. The Giants are a team that's about $5 million over the cap. But they won't have any trouble getting under the cap. They release veterans like Ahmad Bradshaw, Chris Canty, Michael Boley. And so they'll be fine. They cut some dead weight. And they're going to get under the cap very comfortably. They already re-signed Beatty, their tackle. They're probably going to re-sign Victor Cruz here shortly. And then you can test the free agent waters and see what's out there and see if there's anything that you can pull in and bring onto your roster. But for the Giants, there's not a lot of moves to be made because there's not a lot of money to dish out. So it's minimal for the Giants in terms of activity in free agency. So you look at the Giants, the state of the fan base, And it's extreme optimism. optimism. What else could it be? You still got Tom Coughlin. You still got Eli Manning. You still have a chance. Look, 9-7 is nothing to scoff at. The only problem with 9-7 this season is that it wasn't good enough to win you the division as it had been in past seasons when you had that midseason meltdown. So you're still a good football team. You still have Eli Manning. You still have Victor Cruz. You still have Hakeem Nix. You still have Tom Coughlin. You still have the crux of what you need to try and get back to the Super Bowl. And for that, the feeling around the Giants is extreme optimism. And that's the New York Giants in five minutes or less. New York Giants, five minutes or less.